previously on the Downscaling Chronicles. The OSSC Pro and Dex by Marcus, two robust scalers, were built on the solid foundations of their forefather, the original open source scan converter, better known as the OSSC. Released publicly in 2016, this line multiplier is a lagless bridge between retro consoles and modern HD displays. While many have since moved on to more feature-rich scalers, the OSSC has found a second wind, because this old dog has learnt a new trick. A clever software engineer from Poland, known online as E8 Root, and personally to me as Pavel, has created a completely new custom firmware that transforms the OSSC into a downscaler. Pavel first commented on one of my videos about his experimental firmware and it had my curiosity. But when he claimed it turned the OSSC into a true downscaler, that is, with line blending and near zero latency, he had my attention. But I didn't have an OSSC on hand to test. And thankfully, my friend Carl, aka Dent NZ, known for his MSU1 collaboration for the SNES FPGA core, lent me his version 1.6 unit to flash what Pavel calls Void Scaler. After months of testing several builds, a stable version will be out soon, if not already, so check the description for an updated link. To install, flash the dot bin to an SD card with a program like Belena Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager, insert into the OSSC, and navigate to Settings and Firmware Update. Once the OSSC validates the binary file, press 1 on the remote. The flashing should take around 30 seconds, but be patient or you risk breaking the unit. And after restarting, you'll be greeted by Void Scaler's downscaling firmware. To revert the unit back to stock, reflash one of Marcus's firmwares to the SD card, hold the second button on the unit when powering on to enter the bootloader, then hold both buttons when pressing 10 on the remote. Void Scaler supports 720 and 1080p inputs and outputs several flavors of 15 kHz, both progressive and interlaced. The firmware versions I tested only had the VGA input working. Since the output is HDMI, you'll need an HDMI to VGA DAC, and if inputting HDMI, another on the input. To simplify sync handling, Pavel programmed the horizontal sync line to output C-Sync by default, so pass-through cables like those for the Mr. FPGA should work. If your DAC doesn't like C-Sync, you can toggle HV-Sync with the remote and combine externally. I think one of Void Scaler's most impressive features is that it can output 15 kHz via decimation or line blending. I've only seen such a feature with a particular variant of a GBSC Pro, which had a primary scaler that blended lines in tandem with the GBSC's line decimation. But I'm sure this hybrid form of scaling wasn't a deliberate design, unlike Void Scaler. Whether decimating or line blending, 1080 and 720p inputs were downscaled to 4x3 with virtually zero latency at around 1 millisecond, and under 5 milliseconds in 16x9. So far, the test build only has a non-functioning placeholder OSD, and without LCD navigation, all functions are tied to the remote control but a full working OSD may be implemented in the future. The buttons I commonly used were PIC, which changes the aspect ratio for 720p inputs, with full 4x3, letterbox 16x9, and overscan. 1080p can drop to 480i and 240p, 
overscan and letterboxed, but it's still under construction to get everything perfectly centered. The red and green buttons switch between line blend and decimate for 240p, while yellow and blue do the same for 480i. Each mode allows line offset adjustments, letting you fine tune which lines are blended or skipped. Decimation discards two out of every three horizontal lines, and the added sharpness comes at the cost of shimmer and aliasing. Blending by contrast merges three lines into one, preserving detail and slightly softens the image. Line offsets are done with P up and down, located beneath the penis button. Penis! When downscaling 720p content that uses 240p assets, both blending and decimating can look identical if the field offset is aligned correctly. So using the letterbox 16x9 mode keeps Sonic Mania aspect correct, buttery smooth and shimmer free. Celeste also benefits from this letterbox 240p mode which draws 180 perfect vertical pixels. But my real test of shimmer is Jet Rider. This pixel art game was not drawn in 240p, so decimating causes offensive shimmer when objects and sprites with repetitive artwork transcend vertically. This is easily the biggest downfall of my top recommended downscaler the OSSC Pro. One ugly Whereas line blending scalers like the Corio 2 TV1750 trade sharpness for true scaling, overall reducing the shimmer to acceptable, if not negligible levels. And the Void Scaler does an equally impressive job at bringing these modern retro games into the wonderful world of 240p. Pavels had an uphill battle with correct 4 radii output due to the clock generator outputting off-spec vertical sync. If it doesn't quite look right, the good news is that interlacing can be fine-tuned to the display. The current method to adjust is to unscientifically mash the fast forward or back buttons until it looks correct. Here's the process in action with a 1080p input where the settings on boot up had jittery interlacing on the BVM D20. Pressing back a few times eliminated the jitter and produced finer interlacing. It was a little finer than some other downscalers like the Extron DVS605 and the OSSC Pro. The color differences is just the game changing lighting from day to night as this is just to demonstrate how the other scalers coarsely interlace, which looks correct to my eyes, versus the Void scalers finer 480i, specifically on the BVM D20. And I emphasize this because I do believe my Sony monitors are the exception, as Pavel reports to have clean interlacing on an Ikigami Pro monitor, as well as consumer sets. He also suspects worse compatibility with multi-format CRTs, but on the other hand doesn't have one to test. What I can confirm is that 480i output looks just fine on my consumer Lerva CRT with default settings, and on my Pro monitors with some manual adjustments. There are some HV controls, but they're limited. Apart from having vertical field offset, the H and V position can have slight adjustments, so for now you're best to adjust your CRT's geometry instead. Component through RCA and RGB input through SCART will hopefully come at a later date along with 480p input which would allow more holistic ways to downscale other consoles like the Nintendo Wii and the Sega Dreamcast. A navigable OSD will be at the mercy of how much memory is left once all the downscaling features have been optimized. Truthfully, Void Scaler has some downsides to consider. 
unless both decks are high grade, placing one at each end could be a Trojan horse for colour inaccuracies and overall points of failure. Aspect ratio and field offset adjustments work really well, but more HV controls would be ideal. While it's still a work in progress, Void Scaler is more than just a proof of concept. It's a viable downscaling solution. Given Pavel is self-taught in FPGA programming, and this is his first time applying his knowledge, what he's managed to achieve is a massive feat. For a free firmware upgrade, Void Scaler gives OSSC owners near zero lag downscaling to 240p and 480i, with the unique choice between line blending and decimating. Bravo, Pavel. Bravo. Keep a lookout for future firmware updates, and if memory allows, Marcus will consider merging Void Scaler with the original OSSC firmware as a separate boot option. And he is hoping the line blending algorithm gets ported to the OSSC Pro. No pressure, Marcus. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming.